Well, here we are. Nope, different here we are. Welcome viewers, I'm Vivet Veritas, and this is a bit of a different video than usual. Well, I'm still talking about Undertale and Deltarune, so I guess it's not that different. Today, rather than looking at an overarching theme about these games, I wanted to talk about something that is a little bit more specific and a little bit more personal than usual. It's no secret that Toby Fox makes some absolute bangers. Megalovania, Battle Against a True Hero, Big Shot, The World Revolving, you name it and someone's probably played it in front of the Pope. As I use a lot of Undertale and Deltarune music in my videos, I'm frequently going through the soundtracks and picking the most fitting, or my favourites, from them to use. One song in particular has stood out to me for some time, and it almost feels like it's my Undertale song, as no one else really seems to talk about it. Since it's been on the mind, I wanted to give it its own special video, as a treat for both it and myself. And yes, it is going to be playing for the whole video. Today, I want to talk about It's Raining Somewhere Else. For those uninitiated, or who haven't played Undertale in... 8 years? God. Anyway, It's Raining Somewhere Else is the music track that plays when talking to Sans in the MTT Resort restaurant. It's a relatively infamous scene with such iconic lines as you'd be dead where you stand, coming from this adorable little confrontation. The music though is actually a calmer and jazzy version of Sans's normal theme, aptly named Sans, which in turn is a slowed down version of song that might play when you fight Sans, or that's a sped up version? Depends. It also plays in Sans's workshop, though at a 20% slower speed than normal. If the connection to Sans isn't strong enough for you, the music file is called MUS underscore Sans date. So yeah, pretty comprehensive evidence that this song isn't just for the restaurant, but for Sans himself. So what does this song itself represent? Well, there are a couple of things we can break down. The song and its surroundings. The latter is actually probably easier as I don't know anything about music apart from when things sound good. The song itself, as previously mentioned, is a calmer version of Sans. This is well suited for the more serious tone that Sans takes in this scene. When people think of serious scenes with him in it, the ones that obviously come to mind take place in the last corridor. There though, the music doesn't have a connection to him aside from Megalovania and even that is disputable. His role as judge, jury and very rarely, though more than he'd like, executioner is kind of irrelevant to his personality, most of the time. Even if you kill Papyrus, as long as you don't kill everyone, he lets you past. Some could say that it is this very impartiality and lack of care that is why Sans does the job he does. However, I believe that this is truly just another job obligation to him, so it makes sense that there isn't really anything else there that actually relates to him in the ambience of this area. The restaurant scene often goes without mention, however, and I feel like that's not doing Sans's character justice. This scene really highlights his strange moral code, his ideas of duty and promises, and his relationship with Toriel. Most of the scene is taken up by him explaining a promise that he made to a lady on the other side of a large door, who we know as Toriel, due to the bond that they had formed through telling bad knock-knock jokes. It's relatively humorous, as are most of Sans's interactions, but the whole time there is this undercurrent of something bigger at play. This undercurrent pays off when he mentions the promise to protect humans, you, who come through this door, when the music cuts off completely and we get the famous ominous line, you'd be dead where you stand. For this section, you don't have the relaxing song playing in the background, you don't have the nice jazz music intertwined with the familiar tune of Sansa's theme that you likely heard for the first time when you met him just outside the large door he's talking about, the same place where he claims that if he hadn't made that promise, you'd be dead where you stood. With deliberate invocation of this original scene, with the music's mix of calm and familiarity lulling you into a false sense of security only to snatch it away to emphasize the true threat that Sans is, is one of the things that makes this scene so memorable to me. We've had a look at the setting that the song plays in, and how it and the song work together to form particular emotions, so now let's have a look at the song itself to see what we can glean. The name of the song is surprisingly important for a pretty major reason. Now, there isn't any particular evidence to suggest that these song titles of Undertale are diegetic, but that doesn't mean there isn't any meaning in them. As Undertale is, well, a tale that is under, it takes place underground, 
a place quite absent of rain due to there being no sky. I did a semester of geology, so trust me on this one. Invoking rain in a song makes a bit less sense in that case, but obviously the fact that it's raining somewhere else is also important here. Now, although this somewhere else is important, I'd like to take a look at the underground we actually see first. See, although rain is definitely not realistic underground, we do still see it in Undertale. A lot of Undertale isn't realistic. It may not be a literal rain, but if it acts like rain and looks like rain, then I reckon we can count it as such. The interesting thing is that the place where we do see rain in Undertale is Waterfall. Honestly, due to the fact that it specifically mentions somewhere else in the title, if it was raining anywhere other than Waterfall, I probably would have dismissed it. However, Waterfall does have a couple of quite salient connections to Sands. Firstly, we meet Sands in Waterfall at his sentry station here, where he takes us out to dinner to Grillby's. Well, he sure does have a habit of this, huh? Uh, this is another example of Sands being a combination of ominous and friendly that cements him in our mind as such. The second, and probably honestly more important, connection between Sands and Waterfall is of course our good friend W.D. Gaster. I know I find an excuse to talk about him in every video I make, but this one is particularly important. Gaster's room is in Waterfall, again I'm going to make it clear that this is the mystery man and might not be Gaster but at this point I think we're long past that, and cements the pre-existing link between Gaster and Sans even more. Gaster obviously has something to do with Deltarune, with the introduction, the bunker, the windings prophecy and more. Sans is, well, also here in Deltarune. Sans's appearance, seemingly with the same pseudo fourth wall breakage that he's known for in Deltarune, sparked a lot of discussion about where he is actually from. As Deltarune is another world, another potential home where we see that it can and does rain, it is incredibly relevant to the discussion when talking about how it's raining somewhere else ties into Sans' otherworldliness. If we go back to the restaurant scene, Sans talks a lot about you and he going home. Since it's towards the end of the game, it makes sense why Sans is talking about your journey being over and looking forward to going home. He then says, hey, I know the feeling, but oh, though maybe sometimes it's better to take what's given to you. He talks about the good things that Frisk has down here, but there's this feeling, especially after he asks Frisk to forget it after a suspiciously long pause, that maybe this is something a little more personal. It's a fact that in this scene, Sans expresses that he at some point wants to go home as well, and we know from his No Mercy fight that this home he speaks of is distinct from the overworld. It seems like Sans has given up trying to go back, so he's trying to convince Frisk to do the same. It also helps that the song plays in his laboratory as well, with the broken machine heavily theorized to have something to do with otherworldly transportation, if not Deltarune specifically. I think it's no accident that this song that explicitly mentions somewhere else plays in this strange, hidden area that's so different to the rest of the game. The title of this song, invoking both Waterfall and other places such as Deltarune, really cements the idea that this song centers around Sansa's melancholy of presumably being stuck here in Undertale, the familiarity becoming tiring rather than relaxing, but he's learnt how to live with it in relative happiness. I think it's really cool how two parts of the same song title can both lead to this feeling of homesickness through different means, and it really strengthens the emotive thrust of the song that it's trying to achieve by having it placed just before for your final dungeon. So, now that we've rummaged around for some lore tidbits of what this song could mean in the grander scheme of things and why it's important to understanding the song, let's dive deeper into the song. All of these points that I've used talking about sands, waterfall and restaurants all come together to talk about why this song just absolutely slaps. As previously mentioned, the calm jazz style of the song evokes a feeling of calmness and relaxation mixed with the subconsciously familiar tune of Sansa's theme. This small transformation here both adds to the complexity of the song itself as well as reinforcing the themes that I've mentioned so far. Home, ominousness and comedy, themes that are used in the text very heavily in the scene. It's a beautiful cocktail of the emotions that Undertale perhaps best represents, and thus the song is deliberately nostalgic, wistful, and melancholic. It's a song that's meant to make you reflect on how far you've come from this point, gazing into the final hurdle to climb before Asgore and see how you've been taken care of up to this point. It's kind of nice that it gives you this respite while also telling you that Sans could destroy you in an instant. That's something I love about Undertale. You never know what is going to surprise you next, much like the song itself. 
Speaking of being surprised, slowing down the tempo even more gives it a more ominous hint, especially as when you do get to hear the slowed down version in Sansa's lab, it is after the scene where Sansa's shown his hand in a way and is clearly pointing at something bigger going on. In this case, it's the type of transformation that occurs. The original one, transforming Sans into its reigning somewhere else, is one with a significant amount of musical design behind it, actively trying to make the original something new to invoke different feelings while remaining familiar. When slowing it down for Sans's lab though, there is none of that delicateness. It is slower, more frightening, and gives the very strong sense that something is wrong. The calmness is now stretched uncomfortably long, giving such a sense of uncanniness that you can tell whatever this song is meant to mean, its meaning and feeling has been warped by being in here. The song slaps hard, no surprise there. I think we all know by this point that whatever music Toby Fox makes turns to gold like some kind of auditory Midas touch. The feelings that it invokes are very personal by nature, especially the sense of homesickness that I've been highlighting in this video so far, and so I like to talk a bit about my own experiences with the song. When I first played Undertale back in 2015, it was the last year I spent in the home I had lived for for most of my formative years. Getting fully consumed by Undertale was one of the last things I did there really, and at the start of 2016 we moved house. It was a pretty weird time, to be honest. I didn't really go back to Undertale much in that time, mostly because I was busy getting invested in Homestuck, which I'm loath to admit, but another big reason was that I didn't want to spoil the ending and memories that I had with the game. They were frozen in time, perfect in my memory, and since so much had changed in my life, I held on to them. Eventually, though, I did go back, about six years later. With the Undertale fugue state that the internet and myself was locked in earlier, mostly subsiding by now, it was interesting looking back on it with a different lens. It was this playthrough that its rating somewhere else really stuck out to me more, now that I had heard Megalovania and Death by Glamour a thousand times since. Pretty much everything I've mentioned in this video were things I noticed back then, and there's a reason I've been highlighting the homesickness that the song deliberately evokes, because boy howdy did it evoke it in me when I came back to it. How much Sans talks about not being able to go home really resonated with me, but not entirely in a fully literal way. Coming back to a game that you played six years ago means that you're naturally going to reflect on your first playthrough. Not only could I not go back to the home I lived in when I first heard it, but I couldn't go back to the person I was when I first heard it either. The song itself took on a second meaning upon this second experience. While I reflected on my in-game journey the first time I heard it, it was my real-life journey that I naturally reflected upon when hearing it again. The way that your reading and experience of the text can and will so naturally change and adapt over time is one of the greatest strengths of Undertale and its writing, and I think that's reflected really well in this song. Although for some people it's home, his theme, or megalovania, it's raining somewhere else is a perfect encapsulation of all of my feelings about Undertale. The nostalgia, the secrets, the love both that I extended to the game and that was extended to me within it, all of it fits perfectly into this song. Just a simple tune, a remix of another song, but still one that speaks to the listener in an entirely different way. It's not raining where I live now for the person I am now, but maybe, just maybe, it's raining somewhere else. Well, that's all. Thanks again for watching everyone. I know this one was a bit less conventional, but it's a video I personally really wanted to make. I hope you all enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed writing it. I know it wasn't that long. Uh, I love talking about video game music even with my limited understanding, so maybe I'll do a little bit more of it in the future. I've still got plenty in the tank for Gunning Deltarune, but I'm also hoping to widen my scope a little bit. Uh, anyway, not much for me this time. I'd love it if you left a like and comment. As always, I do read all of them, so it's very much appreciated. That's about all though. Until next time, I've been Veritas, and I'll see you again soon.